Now here we are going to see the design procedure of journal wearing. So let us see first of all what is a journal wearing. Journal wearing is a sliding contact bearing uh, which is having a bearing which is fitted in the bearing housing or a bearing uh, frame and uh, through which shaft is passing through. And here uh, this bearing and the shaft or journal which is called journal are separated by the thin uh, film of lubrication which is uh, uh, poured through this or it is passed through this lubricating uh, hole uh, through this uh, uh, bearing and if you see here this is a journal bearing so and load is acting on the journal or shaft this is the diameter of the journal and n is the rpm here the length is l is the length of the uh, bearing so yes so in the design procedure first of all we have to find out the length of the bearing from the l by d ratios and here l is the length of the bearing and d is the diameter of the journal and shaft which is uh, generally given and from this d value and l by d ratio from the data book we have to find out the length and after that we have to check the pressures uh, with the uh, allowable values and also uh, uh, compare this characteristic written by p that is called bearing characteristic number with the bearing modulus and also find out the heat transactions that is heat uh, generated heat dissipated so that should be balanced otherwise you have to go for the artificial cooling so here the uh, basic steps consist of uh, finding out the length and uh, checking the pressure and uh, uh, checking with the bearing modulus and uh, finding out the heat and uh, finding out the if uh, heat is more finding out the uh, mass of oil for the artificial cooling so let us see the design procedure in detail yes see so here this diagram is giving the uh, line diagram of this journal bearing the outer uh, ring if you observe here this is the outer ring is uh, here it is giving the journal and uh, the inner thing is the shaft and it is a lubricating oil so here if you see the other view uh, here is the length of the bearing and it is the journal or the shaft it is the oil view so in the first step as we uh, discussed uh, in the previous slide we have to find out the length of the bearing from the l by d ratios uh, from the data book if you see here it is a table from the data book uh, in this uh, in which you have machinery uh, and the type of bearing for which you have l by d ratios so take l by d ratio uh, for the given application uh, and uh, from that find out the length of the bearing and the next step you have to compare the pressure so here the allowable pressure values are given in this uh, third column uh, like this and uh, here uh, for the type of machinery we have allowable uh, bearing pressure and here first of all calculate the pressure with the given values of the load and the l and d values and compare with that the allowable values so this calculated value of the pressure should be less than the uh, allowable value now in the next step uh, go for, otherwise you have to increase the dimensions uh, such that the pressure should be uh, within the limits and in the next step you have to go for the uh, checking of this bearing characteristic number so let us see here first of all what is z by p is the called bearing characteristic number and here if you see z is the absolute viscosity of the oil n is the rpm and p is the pressure bearing pressure and if you see here uh, let us see if uh, with the given values of this z n and p uh, we have got this z n by p value as something as 12 and this is the example value we are discussing and here are the operating values of z n by p let us take this also z n by p dash means z n by p dash will indicate the operating values which is taken from the data book if you see here uh, like this see uh, fourth column or sorry fifth column we have operating values of z n by p are given so for our uh, machinery given in the question take the operating value and compare it with the this z n by p and how to compare means the operating value of z n by p is generally kept uh, three times of the bearing modulus and first of all here what is the bearing modulus if you see uh, means suppose if you take a graph between coefficient of friction and the uh, z n by p that is bearing characteristic number uh, the value of coefficient of friction is minimum at some particular point at that point if you take the z n by p value that is called bearing modulus k so here 
uh, bearing modulus and that will be they be are not uh, different at this point this the value of that will be at this point is nothing but bearing modulus so we have to take care that the bearing should be operated well above this uh, bearing modulus value so here the operating value which is given in the data book is kept at least three times more than this k value so from with that we have to find out the bearing modulus k so so this can be assumed as the given value is three times of k is nothing but some this value so from this k is one third of this uh, operating value so with that we will get some uh, value example value so this bearing modulus which value you have got should be uh, less than the our calculated value of the z n by t or otherwise our calculated value should be more than the this bearing modulus so such that uh, it, it it is always in the a uh, full lubrication condition and there is no metal to metal contact so uh, that you have to uh, check and uh, in the next step you have to and uh, if you think what happens if uh, this z n by p is less than the bearing modulus p uh, if uh, a light here uh, this is the point where you have minimum amount of friction and also if there is a little bit decrease in the uh, shock sp speed or increase in the load so there is the possibility of metal to metal contact so you should avoid that so for avoiding that this uh, our calculated value of bearing characteristic number should be more than the bearing modulus and in the next step if you see how to find out c by d ratio or you have to take uh, the c by d ratios from the uh, data book here if you see this this column you have c by d ratios take that uh, for different kinds of machinery uh, different values you have here you may see the same values but in some other machineries you may have different values so anyway take c by d ratios from here and that are helpful to calculate uh, the coefficient of friction in the next step so here this is the uh, uh, reverse uh, it is a reciprocal that is nothing but d by c you have to substitute here that should be taken care and here in the next step you have to calculate the coefficient of friction mu with this formula 33 by 10 to the power of 8 is a constant and zn by p into d by c plus k here k is a different thing this is not this k it is a small k let us say and this small k stands for correction for end leakage and it is depends upon the l by d ratios and the general value you can take at a 0 0.002 for uh, general values and from substitute all this and i here i told z stands for absolute viscosity of the oil which will be given in the question and is the rpm of the shaft or journal p is the bearing pressure uh, here p is how to or this z n by p you have to substitute the calculated value not the operating value that you should take care and uh, see the diameter clearance and uh, uh, the value which is shown in the uh, diagram is the radial clearance actually don't confuse here uh, what c it should be c dash let us uh, assume like that so here c stands for the diameter clearance and uh, t is the diameter of the journal and uh, substitute all these values find out the quotient of friction and the next step find out the heat generated with this formula qd is equals to mu into w into v mu is the quotient of friction which you have find out in the previous step and w is the load acting on the journal which is taken in the new things and v is the peripheral velocity or rubbing velocity of the journal uh, that is given by pi d n by 60 where d is the diameter of the journal you have to substitute d in the meters to get it this in meters per second and to guess this uh, get this heat generated in the watts in the next step you have to calculate is heat dissipated heat dissipated is given by the formula c into a into half t naught minus cn so c here it is c is the, let us say it is a capital c uh, it is heat dissipation quotient uh, take in what taken in watts per meter per square per degree centigrade and this c it will depends upon the bearing uh, materials and other conditions and other the conditions are uh, ventilation conditions means uh, how this air is flowing through the bearing suppose if it is unventilated that is in the still air this c capital c value that is heat dissipation quotient can be taken in between 140 to 420 the general values and these values of c is generally mentioned in the question otherwise how to take uh, with this range or in the given condition unventilated or ventilated so suppose for when well ventilated bearing it is in between 490 to 1400 watts per meter square per degree centigrade so depending upon the given condition you have to select a 
middle values from this and how this actually behaves. And A is the projected area of the bearing, that is L into D, as discussed earlier, but substitute it is in the matrix here. And here T0 is the operating temperature of the oil, which is given in this question. And the TA is the ambient temperature, which is also given in the question. Substitute these values and connect with heat dissipated. And here compare uh, the heat generated and heat dissipated. Both should be, at least both generated and dissipated should be equal. Otherwise, if the generated is more than the heat dissipated, so this will be overheating of the bearing happens, which is not required. So if the generated is more than dissipated, so in that case, you have to cool this extra amount of heat by the artificial cooling uh, is required. This is uh, done the, in the next step. If you see the amount of lubricating oil required for the artificial cooling or the mass of the lubricating oil required for artificial cooling is given by the formula Q is equals to Ms delta T. Here M is the mass of the lubricating oil required for the artificial cooling. And the heat Q is the heat to be removed by artificial cooling that is given by QD generated minus dissipated difference. And here S is capital S is the specific heat of the oil taken in joules per kg per degree centigrade. And uh, this S values also are also given in this question. Otherwise, if it is not given in the question, take a middle value like any value with this range. It is a general value. Uh, it, it depends upon uh, especially the type of oil which is given not given just take any uh, value with this range it is a general uh, uh, generally used oil it's a specific heat uh, and also here it should be delta t so delta t is the temperature difference between the oil inlet and outlet temperature of oil which you are pumping for the artificial cooling so substitute all these values find out the mass of the lubricating oil you will get this mass in the kg per second and you can convert into kg per minute by multiplying 60 and also convert into uh, any hours also by the multiplication factors uh, so this is the design procedure for the journal bearing thanks for watching for more videos please subscribe thank you